Trevor. Trevor from Texas to reach Vegas. So we've got the best running car we've ever heard. Andy and Nayla. So we're going to train legs in the four waves to be fun. Someone's going to die. Trevor thinks he's the strongest, so it's probably the biggest, but we'll see what happens. We started with Seed Hampshire Car, go to the pendulum leg press, split squat pass, and not doing that. Intensify the final set, done a couple of sets, two phases. So the final one, gonna rep this one down, the rack. So aim for about seven or eight reps, bring it down a slight bit, carry on till you fail, and then bring it down a slight About 20% as a drop weight. The thing people do wrong when they drop set is they aim for double figures, 10, 12 reps, make it so light they can do another 10 or 12. You only want a drop set to continue maybe four or five extra reps. Try it out. If you look like a uh, 45 degree set hamstring leg press, it's very hamstring and glute. Whereas this, because you can close the gap between your calf and your hamstring so much, you get so much knee flexion, you get a huge amount of quad stimulation out of this, whilst even using less load to some degree. Savage. Swing press works so well. Like Charlie was saying, the cool thing about this is it's not it's not just like brute strength, it's like a like a leg press where you can lift a shitload of weight, but you can't really tell what's moving the weight. We want quads development. This tends to work really well for that. Real deep. So I technically I tend to not go so deep, so I've got a bit of a hamstring issue, but you can technically really deep with this, and it sits all quad, uh, which is what we want. We don't want just brute strength moving stuff for the fucking sake of it. We want to be here, in here, effective and time efficient with what we're doing. This is one of the best, best styles of leg press that we use at the moment. In fact, technically, I think this is the only style of leg press. We either do it both feet or single legged. We've just homed in on this as such a good movement. Batman made the chair though. You are? Oh, Batman made the chair. Because yeah. also, this is a little bit too much like that. Yeah. I prefer it because it's... I get issue as I come here, I get a lot of, a lot of hamstring stretch. And I actually hurt myself, not knowingly, but by coming too deep. It's like a monster that I get the, the hammer string version, which seems a bit old fashioned now. It's not quite the same angle. The angle of that seat hits the bottom more, I think. Yeah. So what you do is you hold on to sleep here. What a lot of people do is either do this or this or, so they're not bracing themselves in the leg press. Now this one, the weight is pushing you straight into the back. So there's not a sensation of you coming out the top. So different people do different things. I tend to then push, I'm still pushing against the part, like the machine, the, the, the stanchions of the machine to push me into the seat. With any movement, no matter what it is, you can only create maximum force from the most stable position. So the analogy is, if you put a raft in the middle of a lake and put a cannon on it and try to fire the cannon, the raft is not stable, what's gonna happen? The, the cannon is not gonna fire at its maximum potential. Get 
to the end. Straight back, straight back, slowly, slowly. No, 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 no. Slow. There we go. That's the one, that's the one, again. Oh, God. Man. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of momentum. You do, you're fast on the drop and you bounce out. You're obviously very strong, but you're taking some of the time under tension. No, you don't need to go light, you need to go slower. That makes it harder. I'm just trying to get reps in. So, but I know, you can, it's all about the mind-muscle connection, time under tension. That's what he's trying to say, and he's right. So I'm gonna do like a split squat with a dumbbell. Andy's doing walking lunges, Neil's doing walking lunges, so you can choose your... I'll figure it out. further to walking lunge because it's easier just to like lock on a muscle rather than to worry about that. So if you're ever having trouble getting into a split squat, a good way to do it is keep your foot foot on the ground, weights on your hand, then you can get your back foot situated and then bend down and now you're in. So you don't have to do that front leg hop thing. You know what I mean? So me, I would generally stimulate my adductors and everything to try and stabilize my pelvis. So I don't do them at the start of the workout, I do them at the end of the workout to make sure I have maximum stability for like the bigger compound exercises and finish adductors off at the end. The reason you want big juicy adductors so it makes your legs look thicker front to back, uh, from side to side. And one of the reasons why people's legs look shit is because they have no adductors, so they have like a massive gap between the thighs and the goal is no thigh gap. Session wrapped up. I'm going to ask everyone individually a different question for the same question. Trevor, what's the secret to getting big legs? Perfect form, good amount of weight, lots of intensity. Repetition in years. So doing heavy leg training, heavy, full depth leg training for many, many years, I think keeps that condition. And then Andy, how do you get bigger calves? <laughs> get bored with big calves. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's the same as anything else. Get everyone's talking to calves. It's probably about doing it with more, with more frequency, and everyone tends to, although this is debatable, everyone tends to put calves at the end of a session. Why not put calves at the beginning of an upper body session? It makes more fucking sense. Rather than put them at the beginning of a leg session or at the end of a leg session, just do calves as often as you fucking can at the beginning of an upper body session, and probably less weight, better quality. Or just have genetically great fucking calves. Yeah. I'll drop everyone's Instagram links below the video. 
All the guys here for our Seven Figure Scaling Systems business event we had in Las Vegas this weekend. We'll put our IG page on the screen right now and also our YouTube channel and podcast if you're a fitness trainer looking to go to a fitness business. If you enjoyed the video, drop in the comments below, smash the like button, subscribe, see you next episode too.